Hello, this is Dr. Huang um, with the UCR School of Medicine and we'll be talking about cerebral palsy. Uh, this is a video brought to you by the UCR Video Library Series. So our learning objectives will be one, define cerebral palsy. Two, recognize clinical signs and symptoms of cerebral palsy. Three, learn about psychiatric disorders commonly associated with cerebral palsy. And four, understand the collaborative and multidisciplinary environment that's required for children with cerebral palsy to thrive and develop. So what is cerebral palsy? Cerebral palsy is a complex group of permanent abnormalities in the development of movement and posture due to non-progressive lesions of an immature brain. Um, it typic it's a disorder of movement, muscle tone, or posture that is caused by damage that occurs to the developing brain most often before birth. Um, so the key words here are in red. It is a permanent um, disorder, so it, uh, it's not very curative. It's mainly um, you want to manage the symptoms. It's not going to go away um, completely. Um, and it's mainly the symptoms are movement and postural. So um, the children with this have disorders of their movement, especially of their muscles and, the, and maintaining their posture. And the lesions in the brain that cause this are non-progressive. What does that mean? It means that the lesions themselves are not going to get worse. So the, um, as time goes on, while the disease is not gonna get um, cured the, on its own, the disease is also not gonna get worse on its own as well. Um, and it's typically caused by um, damage to the developing brain um, in the womb, typically before birth. Um, usually if there's a lack of oxygen um, uh, in the womb or any other uh, abnormalities during pregnancy. So it can be identified as early as one week to, th to three, 36 months old of age and can be identified as late as five years old. And we'll talk about this identification. Um, so um, here are some statistics about cerebral palsy in children. Um, there, it happens about, pretty common for uh, neurological disease, about two in every thousand live births. Um, 17 million people worldwide have cerebral palsy. It's more common in males. Um, the male to female ratio is just a little bit skewed towards male, 1.3 to one. Um, and in the US, one in 323 children have cerebral palsy. It is the most common motor disability in childhood. And you'll see why I emphasize motor. Um, there are many famous people um, with cerebral palsy. I, I, I mean, if I'm a big fan of um, TV series and the, one of my favorite series is Breaking Bad. And one of the actors, R.J. Mitt, um, he plays a, uh, a, a kid or a teenager with cerebral palsy, and he actually does have cerebral palsy um, in real life. And you have all these other no, um, famous people, comedian Josh Blue, Jerry Jewell, Christy Brown, um, Stephen Hopkins, the politician, and Dr. Janice Brunstorm, uh, a pediatric neurologist herself. Um, so as you can see, you know, just because you're born with a motor disease like cerebral palsy, um, it doesn't have necessarily have to inhibit or prevent you from um, having a successful life, um, accomplishing great things. So the signs, as we discussed, of, um, of cerebral palsy typically um, appear during infancy, uh, the one week old period to 36 months and preschool years. Um, what, do you, what do they include? They include muscle tone abnormalities. Um, if you notice some of the children having too floppy um, muscles or too stiff muscles, um, loss of selective motor control. What does that mean? That means that they can't, you know, uh, move individual muscles at their command. They have a, uh, they have trouble lifting a, a specific limb. Uh, involuntary movements. What does that look like? Um, I mean, typically we think of like an old Parker, uh, patient with Parkinson's or Lou Gehrig's um, and having tremors. Um, but even uh, kids with cerebral palsy can present with involuntary movements. Tremors, shaking at rest um, is a very common one. Um, lack of muscle coordination. Uh, we call this in the medical field ataxia. So um, one, one test that we, one neurological test that we do is we have the, the our patient just um, touch our finger with their finger. And you'll notice that in kids with cerebral palsy, it will be very hard for them to coordinate their finger to touch our own finger. Um, and that's due to a lack of muscle coordination. 
Um, you'll see abnormal reflex patterns. Um, they'll have, be very, um, we call it hyperreflexive, or they'll be very, uh, have exaggerated reflexes. When you hit their knee, their knee will, um, will instantly and briskly um, shoot up and extend. Um, and you'll also see changes in muscle bulk or strength. Um, because they have these loss of selective motor controls, they don't use the muscles typically the way a normal person would use it. And so sometimes um, they'll be have very high tone of muscle in some areas and very low tone area um, muscles in, in, more, in the more common areas where there should be tone and bulk. So as I, I keep mentioning, cerebral palsy is a motor disorder. And I emphasize this because it only affects um, motor and muscle movement and coordination. It does not affect anything to do with cognition or intellect. Um, if you watch Breaking Bad, you notice that um, RJ Mitt, he speaks with the slur, um, and many people confuse that slur um, and that speech disorder or, um, with having intellectual disability, when in actuality, it's just him being unable to move his tongue um, well or, or um, coordinating his laryngeal muscles or his voice vocal cords very well because um, you know those are muscles and we those are in the realm of um, the motor um, domain um, another thing that you can look out for in children is if they have this thing called scissor like gait gait is just a medical term for how um, patients walk and as you can see this patient or in this figure here ha doesn't really have good control of its of his um, legs and so he has to compensate by walking like this. Um, so like I said, uh, important clues that can kind of clue you in on some sort of underlying neurological motor disorder. Maybe they, um, as an infant, they're having delays in their milestones, um, especially their motor skills. Like they can't sit up by themselves. They don't crawl properly. Maybe they use their arms more um, instead of um, using their legs. Maybe they're favoring one side of the body. Maybe they're having difficulty walking like that scissor-like gait that we saw here. Um, and maybe they're having difficult, um, difficulty with precise motions, like picking up objects, placing them in the right hole. Um, like I said, motor, we typically think of the limbs, but it can also affect other muscles too, like your tongue, like your mouth. So maybe they're drooling a lot because they can't close their mouth. Um, maybe they're having speech problems. And then what we really fear is that um, with any brain disorder, it puts you at a risk for increased um, risk of seizures. Um, and seizures can potentially be fatal, and so we always want to be watching out for that as well. So as I said before, intellectual capacity is most, most often normal or near normal in patients with cerebral palsy. It's, it's simply a motor disease. So their ability to perform math, to learn things, um, is usually not impaired. So um, children with cerebral palsy should not be um, counted out as um, per se. So sometimes the motor symptoms are frequently accompanied by other things. Um, because there's a lot of um, difficulty with moving your muscles and you know children are very uh, astute, they start to see that the, their peers can do other things that they can't. They can have disturbances, and especially in their behavior. Um, they can also have speech impairment, vision problems. We have tiny muscles in our eyes that control um, uh, and move our eye and so whenever you, you have um, a motor problem it can also affect your eyesight as well because your eyes won't be able to move where you want them to um, and like I said they can have fatal seizures and maybe some even GI constipation we have muscles in our um, digestive system that can um, that help with um, digestion and so those can also be affected as well so this is just a, um, a, a good figure here kind of um, summarizing all the, th the symptoms and the um, abnormalities that a patient with cerebral palsy can have. Um, but what I'd like to talk to you about um, from, the, uh, from the Department of Psychiatry is the common psychiatric disorders that accompany cerebral palsy. As you can imagine, having any sort of illness can be debilitating. It can be debilitating mentally as well. Um, it can cause a lot of stress. And so a lot of things, uh, especially the things in red, can arise in children, especially children with cerebral palsy. They can start to get depressed. Um, they can start to have parent-child relational problems. They can start to have deficits in attention. Their emotion and emotions can run wild. We call that emotional ability, where they're having intense movement, uh, mood swings. They can be impulsive. They can just have really pretty much any psychiatric disorder um, associated with cerebral palsy. So what is the treatment? Well, like I said, there is no cure for cerebral palsy. Um, 
But what's the most important thing about managing cerebral palsy is detecting it and having them see a pediatrician or neurologist as soon as possible. Um, all children should have an integrated, coordinated, multidisciplinary care plan. To properly care and manage for a child with cerebral palsy, they're going to require maybe an orthopedic surgeon that can maybe, if they have tight muscles somewhere that's causing them pain, maybe they can relieve that pain by um, um, performing surgery. They need to ha obviously have a pediatrician, uh, obviously have a neurologist following them, but they can need maybe... They also need therapists. They need physical therapists to maybe help them um, deal with um, trying to train their muscles a little bit better. Maybe they need speech and language, language therapists because they're having trouble, difficulty talking. And like I said before, there's a lot of mental illness that can accompany cerebral palsy. So they, they should have a team of psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, counselors. And obviously the people who probably will have the most contact with children and are the ones that, are pro that can make um, and spot um, any of these early signs and symptoms and, um, and start to bring questions about whether the um, child has cerebral palsy or not are the teachers and the daycare providers. So there are a lot of benefits to detecting cerebral palsy early and intervening early with the whole slew of teams and um, specialties as discussed below right here. So um, what is, how does it, what are some of the benefits? Well, the parents and guardians of the children are educated um, firsthand and early so they can help manage it. And they're the ones who are taking care of the children day in and day out. Um, they can even start to get a little bit of their motor function level restored, just a little bit. Um, um, but with physical therapy, with, um, you know, the body can, the body and the mind have a great way of compensating for things properly, and if it's when trained well with therapists, that, that can happen. Um, there can be reduced complications. Um, their pain can be managed. You know, some patients have very tight muscles because they can't relax them, and it causes a lot of pain. Um, but mainly, they have improved communication to facilitate participation in social activities in all settings. So it makes them feel normal, especially in school and daycare, and it helps protect against anxiety, against the depression, against the stress. So uh, in summary, um, cerebral palsy is a disorder of purely motor function due to a defect in the developing brain. Um, it is not autism, so it does not affect the, the ability to socialize with others. Um, and, it, and autism is not cerebral palsy. They might have the same speech, they might um, present similar with similar um, behavioral symptoms, but they're not the same. Um, many children with cerebral palsy grow up to be high-functioning adults and intelligent ones uh, that are capable of accomplishing pretty much anything. And um, if, if you have a children with cerebral palsy, you want to be very cognizant um, and uh, aware that they, are ha they have higher risk of developing any psychiatric disorders um, due, to, due to their um, neurological uh, condition and all the stress and the difficulties that they have with I'm trying to fit into society and adjust to society. Um, this has, uh, and it requires a full multidisciplinary team with, uh, with neurologists, with pediatricians, with psychiatrists, with therapists, with teachers, with um, daycare providers, um, with counselors for these children with cerebral palsy to thrive. Um, thank you for this presentation. Um,